الحمد لله رب العالمين يهدي من يشاء من عباده إلى صراط مستقيم نحمده على هدايته ونشكره على رعايته وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أيها المسلمون تقول الله وأتيئوا فإن هول المحشر شديد وإن الحساب عسير قال تعالى وينجي الله الذين اتقوا بمفازتهم لا يمسهم السوء ولا هم يحزنون Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam with his own two hands. He created him in the most perfect image. Then he breathed into him a soul and he honored him and favored him with residence in Jannah. He gave for him a spouse who would be a comfort for him. But he left one thing for Adam alayhi salam which was prohibited. Don't approach that one single tree from the countless trees in Jannah. One was forbidden for him, alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, فَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمْ So we said, O Adam, إِنَّ هَذَا أَدُونَ لَكَ وَلِزَوْجِكَ This is your enemy for you and your wife. فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ Do not let him take you out of Jannah. فَتَشْقَى so that you will be distressed. Al Hassan al Basri rahimahullah said, The life of this dunya is distress because he was taken out of Jannah. Fatashqa shaqa dunya la yura ibn Adam illa nasaba. He will have distress with the distresses of the life of this dunya. And you will not find the son of Adam except that he is constantly tired within it. My brothers and sisters, there is no doubt that we live in a world of constant distress. But there is something from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, which leaves the believer in astonishment. Let's count the number of distresses that he had. وسلم. He was born an orphan. When he was born, his family didn't have much wealth. Then at the age of six, his mother dies. He was then moved from one house to another to constantly live with extended family members. As he became a young adult, he had a basic job. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for him to be the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was harmed. He was beaten. He was choked. He was strangled. He was plotted against. His honor was tarnished. They celebrated when he lost his son. Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he then lost his wife who he loved dearly radiallahu anha they tried to kill him in Mecca they tried to kill him in Medina and all of this happened in the last third of his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but the astonishment comes in a narration which has been reported by Bukhari a Muslim Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajali who became Muslim towards the end of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life he said لا أراني إلا تبسم في وجهي. جرير said رضي الله عنه that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم never saw me except that he was smiling. Another another one from his companions رضي الله عنه عبد الله بن حارث رضي الله عنه he said in a hadith which is reported by Tirmidhi. And it's made Sahih by Shaykh Al-Bani. He said, رضي الله عنه, ما رأيت أحد أكثر تبسما. I've never seen someone. I've never seen someone who smiled the most من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم more than the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Another one of his companions, Al-Bara bin Azim, in Bukhari al-Muslim, he describes for us the face of the Messenger of Allah for those who have not seen him. 
He said, an, كَانَ أَحْسَنِ النَّاسِ وَجْهَا He had the best and the most handsome and the most beautiful of faces. Allahu Akbar, my brothers and sisters. The astonishment of the character and the strength of this man. He was harmed. He was tested. But in the face of sadness and negativity, he smiled. Bi ami wa ummi. Bi abi wa ummi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu. He narrated a hadith that's been reported by Bukhari and Muslim. That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there one day. And a man came and he pulled the garment of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He pulled it so hard that it left marks on his neck sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This man came begging to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Anas bin Malik, out of astonishment, he says, فَالْتَفَتَ إِلَيْهِ So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to him. فَدَهِقْ He smiled. And then he commanded the people to give this beggar what he wanted. And brothers and sisters, man is is gained by being pleasant and smiling to people. Because smiling gives you an insight of a person's sincerity. Hence, Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he defined good manners in saying, وَكَفُّ الْأَذَى Manners is to make sure you don't harm anyone and nothing harmful comes from you. وَبَذْلُ النَّدَى Manners is to make sure that you hasten to benefit people and that you are a beneficial person. وَصَبْرُ الْأَذَى وَالصَّبْرُ عَلَى الْأَذَى Manners is to make sure that you are patient when you are harmed and when you are being tested. وَالْوَجْهُ الطَّرِقُ Manners is that you have a cheerful face. Good manners, my brothers and sisters, can only be accomplished if a person is joyful and smiling. In fact, my brothers and sisters, carrying a smile on your face carries a reward. In a hadith which has been reported by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تحكرن من معروف شيئا Do not belittle any good deed. ولو أن ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طريق Even if you were to meet your brother with a smiling face. Ibn Battal رحمه الله said in commentary that we learn from this that smiling at people وتراقة الوجه and having a jolly and cheerful face من أخلاق النبوة This is from the etiquettes of prophethood. تكبر, and it nullifies arrogance and it creates love. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, smiling is a good deed and its benefits are extended. In fact, my brothers and sisters, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, a smile on your face is an act of charity and you don't even need to spend a penny. In another hadith which is reported by Tirmidhi in Cluster Sahib Albani, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, تَبَسُّمَكَ فِي وَجْهِ أَخِيكَ لَكَ صَدَقَةً Smiling towards your brother is an act of sadaqah. My brothers and sisters, as hardships increase, trying to please people would become impossible. Because people, when they go through difficulty, can never be pleased. But the Prophet wasallam actually showed us a way where a person can bring positivity to the even most negative of people. In a report which is collected by Bazzar and is being classed as Hassan Ba'al Bani under authority of Abu Hurair the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Innakum nas bi amwalikum. Surely you will not make people happy with your money Surely you will not attain the love of the people with what you possess Walakin yas'awhum minkum but you can make them happy Bastul waj wa husnul khuluq but you can make them happy with a cheerful face and good manners. My brothers and sisters, the people, the people who fulfill their wajibat and they stay away from the muharramat and they do this every day with a smile on their face, they are the best of Allah's creation. In a hadith in a Tirmidhi which has been made sahih by Shaykh al-Rabani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ala ukhbirukum biman yahrum ala nar Shall I inform you of a person that the fire is forbidden for him? O biman tahrum alayhi nar That he is forbidden for the fire or the fire is forbidden for him. 
So he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala kulli karibin, hayinin, sahlin. For every person who is approachable, for every easygoing person, for every soft individual. Imam al Dhahabi rahimahullah describes the people of Jannah. He says, The highest levels in Jannah are reserved for those people who cry at night. The highest levels of Jannah is reserved for the people who cry at night and smile during the day. And he spoke the truth, my brothers and sisters, rahimahullah. Allah describes faces on the day of judgment as being bright and beaming, smiling and happy. How could they have this reward in the akhirah if they didn't have these actions in the dunya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us that your happiness and your smiling, all of this is connected to your return to Allah. وَأَنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَهَىٰ وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَدْحَكَ وَأَبْكَىٰ وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَمَاتَ وَأَحْيَىٰ أقول ما سمعتم وأقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو غفور رحيم Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Amma ba'd, my brothers and sisters, this is how they were. And this is how they described the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jabir radiallahu anh describes when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to receive revelation from this guy. He said, Jabir, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a bringer of glad tidings. So whenever he used to receive revelation from Allah, فَأَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ دَحِقَا وَأَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقَا When he used to receive revelation from Allah, he was... He was the person who used to smile the most and he had the best of manners with the people. My brothers and sisters, and the smile on your face. The smile on your face is connected to your iman. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, Al-Bir, Shay'in Hayin, piety is something which is easily attainable. Your iman is something which is easily attainable. He says, Wajh al-Tariq wa kalam al to have a joyful face and to speak people nice. My brothers and sisters, smiling is the best benefit that you can benefit the creation with. Urwa ibn Zubair, rahimahullah, he said, Boston, make sure that your face is pleasant. This will be more beloved to the people than if you gave them free giveaways. My brothers and sisters, smiling is a sign of a person's fiqh and his wisdom and understanding. Hamad ibn Zayd, one of the ulama and the leaders of the salaf, he describes his teacher, Ayyub Sikhtiyani, one of the leaders and the imam of the salaf. He said, Ma ra'aytu rajulun qat. I have never seen a man ashaddu tabassumun fi wujuhi nas min Ayyub. I have never seen a man who used to smile in the faces of people more so than Ayyub al-Sikhtiyani, rahimahullah. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, said, Yambaghi al-Wajh al-Hassan, it is binding for a person who has a nice face, an la yashina wajhu bi qabihim fi'aluh. If a person has a nice face, he shouldn't corrupt that with evil deeds. Wa yambaghi al qabihim wajh, and it cannot be that a person has a mean face, a frowning face, <laughs> that he combines the two, combines a mean face with mean actions. My brothers and sisters, very rarely the Prophet was rebuked by Allah because he was perfect in delivering the message. 
But there was a time when he was rebuked. And that time is when he did not smile. Instead, the surah begins with rebuking the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, And it ends with describing pleasant faces on the Day of Judgment. Surah Abasa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebukes him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, despite the fact that he was noble and lofty in his characteristics. Abasa wa tawalla and jahun a'ma. He frowned and he turned away when the blind man came to him. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَأَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ أَوْ يَذَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعُ ذِكْرًا Because of his frowning and smiling, Allah sent down revelation from above the arsh to tell him not to frown and not to turn away. From that day it's been narrated that whenever the Messenger of Allah وسلم, met Ibn Mukhtum, he was kind to him. He used to smile in his face. He used to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebuked him. He used to smile in his face despite Ibn Umm Maktoum being blind. Yet he still used to smile in his face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, we live in a world riddled with fitna. It's full of sadness and depression, and this will only spread as the fitna spreads. But one thing that we learn from the best of mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that his iman and his tawakkul and trust in Allah meant that he was always smiling. He knew that this was temporary. He knew that this is all beyond his capabilities. He knew that he, she told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, من أحب لقاء الله أحب الله لقاء Those people who are happy and they look forward to meeting Allah. Allah is happy and he looks forward to meeting them. So what else can you do except to submit and show submission to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala while smiling with whatever he has decreed. Ala sallu wa sallimu ala khayr al-bariya wa azka bashiriya. Qala ta'ala inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidun majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ودمر أعداءك وأعداء الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم إن نسلك علم نافع وقلب خشع ولسان ذاكرة وعمل صالح ويقين صادقا ورزق طيبا اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وسنتنا من الكذب وعيننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة العين وما تخفي الصدور اللهم طهر نفوسنا اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأسلح ذات بيننا واهدنا سبل السلام ونجنا من الظلمات إلى النور ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وآف مبتنانا واهد شبابنا يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار إباد الله يذكر الله يذكركم وشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنعون